everybody, welcome to Doing Dental School. My name is Kajal Khatri. I am a first year dental student at Marquette University School of Dentistry. And as a first year dental student, I've recently applied to dental school, not this past cycle, but the cycle before. And so I wanted to just share some tips and tricks for the application that I thought it would be helpful for you guys. I know that application season is coming up and everyone's kind of getting ready to apply for the next cycle. And so I thought just sharing some of the tips that I have, especially just simple things of like writing out the application and actually filling it out, I thought it would be helpful for me to share with you guys. So if you want to stick around, my entire channel is about being a mentor to other dental students and pre-dental students. So if you want to stick around, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Also, I'm only sharing like five or six tips in this video, but obviously I have so much more wisdom to share with you guys about the application. Obviously, I want to help as many of you as I can. So if you do like this video and you want me to make like a part two to this video, definitely let me know. Also, before we get started, I just want to say that I am not on an admissions committee and I have no relation to the admissions committee of any dental school. So this is all from my personal experience and what I've been told in the past as well. Okay, so first things first, be really careful filling out your transcript on your application. So essentially how it works on that IDEA Access application is when you go in to put your transcript in, you actually manually fill out your entire transcript. So you have to put your class numbers, your class names, the grades that you got, all of that stuff. And essentially what happens is you put it in yourself. You also can pay somebody to do it, but I've never used that feature. I don't know anyone that has used that feature. So I'm not sure if I would necessarily recommend it. I'm sure it's great, but I've just never used it and I don't have much experience with it. But personally, I went through and I individually put in every single grade of every single class I had taken in college, especially like including AP classes and all that stuff. And you have to be super, super careful when doing this. Essentially what happens is you put it in and then you send your official transcript to Adia Adsess and they go through and cross-reference everything to ensure that it is exactly how it appears on your transcript. So for this one, I would say be very careful because it will hold up your application if you make any mistakes. And then also I would recommend just ordering yourself an official transcript. So when you're ordering that transcript for Adia Adsess, it might be worth that extra 10 to $15 to order one for yourself so that you are putting in all of your grades and all of your classes exactly how it'll appear for Adia Adsess when they go through and cross-reference everything and make sure you didn't make any mistakes. So going along with that last tip, you don't want your transcript to hold up your application because you want to apply as early as possible. You want your application to be in front of that admissions committee as soon as possible. If you watched one of my recent videos where I walked through the entire application timeline, you'll remember that the application opens up sometime in May or June and it's open until February. Like you have a really long time to apply, but you want to apply as close to that June date as possible because that'll give you the best shot of getting yourself in front of that admissions committee, getting yourself an interview and an acceptance in the end. Essentially, this is how I look at it. If a school, let's say, has like 500 interview spots, if they have 500 left or if they have 400 left, they're going to be much less selective than if they only have one or two of those spots left. Obviously, it's going to be more competitive to get one of those last one to two spots rather than if they still have 400 spots for an interview open. So going along with that whole tip of applying early, also remember that you can submit your application even if your letters of recommendation haven't been submitted and if you haven't taken your DAT. So personally for me, I actually submitted my application without my letters of recommendation being attached to my application. And essentially how I did this was I put in my letter writer's contact information. I made sure that Adia Adsas would send them an email saying, hey, here's the link. Make sure you submit a letter of recommendation for Kajal. And then I submitted my application and essentially the application will take a few weeks to process and to make sure everything's verified. And in that time that my application was being processed and reviewed, my letter writers submitted their letters of recommendation. So this is a tip in how you can apply as early as possible. Don't wait until your letter writers are completely done. You can submit your application before that. 
Okay, so my next tip goes along with the actual application and the extracurriculars and activities that you'll enter into the ADSS application. So if you don't know what I'm talking about with starred or highlighted activities, make sure to go and check out my ADSS application tour where I literally screen recorded my entire application and walk you through it. But essentially on the ADSS application, you can star or highlight up to five activities on your extracurricular page. What starring or highlighting an activity would do is it would take that activity and put it on the front page of your application when a dental school reads your application. So this can be really helpful for you, especially as pre-dental students, most of us are pretty involved in school. We're involved in a lot of activities. And so this allows you to kind of highlight some of the more key activities that you've been a part of. Now, these activities can range anything from employment to clubs and activities to shadowing. There's a lot that goes into that. So what I would recommend is choosing diverse activities to highlight on your application. This will really allow you to put your best foot forward to dental schools because you're going to basically show them that you are a well-versed candidate and that you've been involved in many different types of events. So what I mean by this, basically, say if you were the president of two clubs on campus, and you shadowed five dentists and you had two jobs on campus. It's not gonna be helpful for your five highlighted items to be those five dentists that you shadowed unless you really had a life-changing experience at all five of those dental offices. Instead, what I would recommend is maybe taking one shadowing experience that you're gonna put on that front page, one of the clubs that you were involved with, and one of the employment opportunities that you had during your undergrad. So that's kind of what I mean by choosing a diverse list of activities to highlight on your application. It makes you look very well-rounded and it gives dental schools a full, well-rounded view of what type of applicant you are. Okay, so my next tip might seem a little bit scary, but trust me, I think it really helps. If you have a question, don't be afraid to email or reach out to admissions of a school. Now, I know that sounds kind of dumb, like, oh, ask for help if you have a question, but I've seen so many pre-dental students who have questions about their application or have questions about a certain school or their application process, and they're too afraid to reach out to admissions because it's, it, I get it, in your mind, you're like, oh my gosh, this is the, these are the people that are going to make the decision of if I get into dental school or not, I don't want to mess anything up, but honestly, emailing them or calling them and asking, they take note of everything. They write down your name, they know who you are, and I think reaching out to them and asking questions shows that you're interested in their school. It shows a genuine interest and it also shows that you aren't afraid to reach out for help and that's really a good sign to dental school. So obviously don't reach out to them with silly little questions, but if you genuinely have a question about their school or their application, reach out to them via email or phone call and just talk to them. They're great. That's literally their entire job is to answer questions for incoming students and applicants who are interested in their school. And then my last step that I'm going to share today is once you submit your application, save a PDF of each individual application from your Adia AdSys. So once you submit, again, you can look at my Adia AdSys application tour to see what I'm talking about. But essentially, once you submit, you can actually download each individual application because some of the schools will actually have some supplemental information that they ask on the Adia AdSys application. And so making sure that you have that downloaded and that you can easily reference all of those documents is really important, especially when it comes to interviewing and making sure that you can review the application before you have an interview with that school, it can be really helpful to just have a saved version on your computer or on your desktop. And going along with that, what I did was I actually took a Google Drive and a Google folder and I made one folder for every single school that I applied to. That way in those folders, I essentially just kept adding any information that I got from each individual school. So any confirmation emails, payment emails, any interview invites, any interview prep that I was doing for that individual school. I kind of just kept everything organized to make sure that I had an easy way to access all of those files. So that is all I have for you guys today for this application tips video. As I said, I could probably talk about this all day. I have so many tips and tricks that I can share with you guys. So if you want a part two to this video, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I'll see you next time. Bye.